Book of Romans. <coughs> a good Roman can go anywhere in the Bible. The Book of Romans. The meeting this day is on the gospel, but before we take it up, I just want you to look at the Book of Romans. The theme for the Book of Romans is two words, of God, the gospel of God. Look at verse 1. Verse 7, the beloved of God. Verse 10, the will of God. Verse uh, 16, the power of God. Verse 17, the righteousness of God. Verse 23, the glory of God. Verse 25, the truth of God. Verse 32, the judgment of God. Verse 4, the goodness of God leads man to repentance. Verse 24, the name of God, and there are different names for God. Chapter 3, verse 2, the oracles of God, the word of God, the oracles of God. Verse 7, the truth of God. Verse 18, the fear of God. And go down to verse 25. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remissions of, the, of sins that are past. Whose sins that are past? Old Testament believers' sins that are past. Through God's forbearance, the forbearance of God. God was willing to forbear all of those sins committed by Adam and Eve and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Joseph and David and Solomon, and the Queen of Sheba and King, King Nebuchadnezzar. God forbore. He held back their deluge of wickedness and corruption and sins until Christ could perform redemption upon the cross of Calvary. So the Old Testament believers are saved through redemptive work of our Savior upon Calvary's cross. Isn't it wonderful? He forbore with me till I was 20 years of age. I got saved when I was 20. I've been saved over 60 years. So you know what how old I am. <laughs> yeah, Margaret, she got saved when she was 10. I have a child got saved when he was 5. So if you're not saved, you need to believe the gospel, the good news of salvation, and trust Jesus as your Savior. You don't even have to have any faith. For by grace are we saved through faith, and that's not of yourself, not your faith. I didn't even know what faith was the night I got saved. No, I didn't. I didn't know what repentance meant till after I got saved. It's the gift of God. God will save you right in your seat. A boy in Bluefield, West Virginia, got saved in his seat. Abraham got saved, excuse me, Matthew got saved in a box, tax collector's box. Zacchaeus got saved when he came down the tree, received the Lord Jesus joyfully. So if you're here this morning, you're not saved. You better get saved. That's a word of warning. The Lord loves you, Christ died for you, and he wants to save your soul. But you must re repent of your sins, Repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And you don't have it to have any faith. God will give you the faith to get saved. Want to be saved? You can be saved right in your seat where you are. Just where you are. If you're not saved, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, I'm lost. I want to be saved. You'll get saved this morning before you walk out that door. And you'll thank God for that. It's not good to be saved. Now the message today... That's just an aside. The message today is the gospel. What can we call the gospel? What would you call it? Sorry, but a G. It's good news. That's right. I have good news for you. And best of it all is true. So it's good news. The glorious gospel of Christ is good news. Now let me tell you. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried, however, the burial has no vicarious and nothing vicarious in the burial. But what Christ became, he became sin. And it must be banished out of God's sight in the burial of Christ. Nothing vicarious in the burial. But then he was raised up the third day according to the scripture. Not from the dead, but from among the dead. So basically that's the gospel. However, 
Now that Paul got saved, he adds something to that is called the gospel of the glory. There's a man in heaven. There's one man in heaven. There's souls and spirits there. My God, loved ones there, departed this life to be with Christ, which is far better. But it's only one man in heaven. And that's the man Christ Jesus. He is filling all heaven. He has a body just like you and me, but he has a glorified body. Everyone else there, they're with souls and spirits. Their body's out in a cemetery. So how wonderful it is to hear this good news of the gospel. Chapter 1 of uh, Romans, uh, chapter 1. The gospel of God, verse 3, is concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness, the Holy Spirit, by the resurrection of dead persons, not his resurrection, the resurrection of Jairus' daughter, the resurrection of widow named son, the resurrection of Lazarus. We know Christ arose from the dead. If he wasn't risen, we'd be still be in our sins. But this doesn't have to do with him. It has to do with those three people he raised from the dead. Jairus' daughter, the widow named son, and Lazarus. Lazarus had already been dead for four days. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And he came forth. So how wonderful. That's the gospel, of the good news. Gospel of God concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Also look at verse uh, 16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the dynamite of God. We get our word dynamite, dunamis, Greek word. The dynamite of God, the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Now even that's been changed. Anyone, Jew, Gentile, male, female, barbarian, Scythian, those who are locked up in jail, my wife's been going to jail for 30 years. Yeah, she has. Giving the glorious gospel of Christ to the women. How wonderful that is. And sometimes we'll be walking down the street or we're in Walmart or someplace and someone comes up and says, you led me to Christ in the Chesapeake City Jail. The gospel works. Are you saved? Everybody safe here? If you're not saved, you can be saved. Right today, you can be saved. Ask the Lord Jesus to save you and he'll save you. How precious that is. It's good news. It's good news. Uh, first of all, it's good news of redemption. We've already seen that. Redeem. Not with silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. Not with Judaism. Judaism will send you right straight to hell. Now, God used Judaism for quite a while, but that's been done away with. People talk about Judeo and Christian principles. No Judeo. No, no. A lot of places have Judaism. Judaism was done away with. It served its purpose. It's Christianity. And how precious that is to be redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. Go to verse 26 of chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 26. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, God's righteousness, and that he might be just and a justify of him which believeth in Jesus. You want to be justified? You see, I don't even know what justification means. It means God imputes his righteousness to you, not Christ's righteousness. No, no. God imputes his righteousness to everyone who believes. And something else happens too. You get your sins forgiven. Every sin that you've ever committed, every wicked deed you have performed, every corrupt thing you've seen on television or wherever can be forgiven. All my sins, so great, so many, are washed away by the blood of Christ. Everybody here, in the, 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 by your forgiveness of sins, the Lord wants to forgive you your sins. Acts 13, 38, truth. This man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins, but it even goes further. Through this man you can be justified from all things you could not be justified by the law of Moses. The law cannot save you. Only grace can save. And so how wonderful that is to have our 
sins forgiven. Have you had your sins forgiven? Well, that's good. I see some heads nodding. It's good to have your sins forgiven. But when you get your sins forgiven, you're, you're justified. Just as if you never sinned. Isn't that wonderful? Just as if you never sinned. God imputes his righteousness to you when you get your sins forgiven. Look at Ephesians chapter 1. The book of Ephesians. Chapter 1. This is the second text that you might want to underline. Verse 7. Ephesians 1 verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So you get your sins forgiven, you're redeemed, and you're justified. You're justified by faith. You're justified by the blood of Christ. And we're justified by his resurrection from among the dead. We have a risen Savior. But you know something? It goes further. The ascension of Christ is God's plan for all believers. When Mary Magdalene saw the Lord Jesus, he didn't, he didn't say, go tell my brother I've risen. Go, you go tell my brother I sinned unto my father, your father, my God, your God. The ascended Christ is the gift of the Holy Spirit. The ascended Christ is the birthday of the assembly. So he wasn't just died upon the cross. If he did, thank God he did die upon the cross, but if, if he was still on the cross, I'd wear a mere crucifix around my neck. No, no. He's risen, ascended, and glorified. There at God the Father's right hand. He's filling all heaven. When he was on earth, he filled and he, he thrilled and he delighted. He, he satisfied God the Father's heart. Even at his baptism, at his transfiguration, God says, this is my beloved son whom I found all my delight. Have you found delight in the Lord Jesus? I tell you, if you found delight in him, you will be transformed. You want to be transformed? We get our word metamorphosis. You want to be metamorphosis? Yeah, you can be transformed by getting occupied with that loving man in heaven. The man Christ Jesus. Not just Jesus Christ. He is Jesus Christ. He still is Jesus. But he's the man Christ Jesus mentioned 50 times, 49 times by Paul and once by Peter. There's therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. So it's good to know these differences that you might grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But something else took place too when we, when we get saved, the gospel. We have been reconciled to God because we were alienated from the very life of God. We were enemies in wicked works. But now through the work of Christ, not only have we been redeemed, not only do we have our sins forgiven, not only are we justified, but we have been reconciled to God through the death of his dear beloved son. It's the highest truth in salvation, reconciliation. It places you in new creation. Isn't that wonderful? And he gives us a ministry, each of each believer ministry of, of reconciliation. We can tell people to be reconciled to God. Wonderful message. Because we're ambassadors for Christ, we can go and tell others to be reconciled to God. Well, let's look at something else. Anybody quote Ephesians 2 8 9? Ephesians 2 8 9. Well, I'm looking at your Bible. That's okay, you look at your Bible, Saeed. For by grace are you saved through faith. <coughs> so we have salvation, we're saved. If any man say, I have sinned and perverted that which is right, deliver that soul from going down to the pit, I found a ransom. If you're not saved, you're going down to the pit. If you leave this life without Christ, you won't be in paradise with the Lord Jesus. No, no, Christians will, but you'll go down to the pit. But that's not the final, that's just temporary. That's the holding cell. 
That's the holding cell. You'll be have to be raised and cast into the lake of fire because your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life. So you don't want to go to the pit, I'll tell you that. There's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth in the pit. Yeah, this is reality. This is not just something to waste to, to, to entertain anyone. No, no. If you don't get saved, you go down to the pit. It's a bottomless pit. You just keep falling and falling and falling, your soul and spirit. Never, never wind up anywhere. Gnashing of teeth. I could have been saved, but I got lost. I didn't take Jesus as my Savior. I put it off. I thought I had some more time. You don't have any more time. We can't give anybody any second chances. No second chances. No, the Lord may come and you'll be lost. You'll be left behind. And after you're left behind, you couldn't be safe. You wanted to be because God will send you a fall. A, 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 False delusion that you believe the lie of the devil, that you might be damned because you had pleasure in unrighteousness and receive not the love of the truth. But you can be saved today. One of our granddaughters came into our office. Granddaddy, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm saved. Well, that was wonderful. So, you want to be saved? Yes, she was just a little girl. So how good, how good to be saved. But you also, you know something else? Not only are you saved, but something else takes place once and for all. You're sanctified. Hebrews 10, 10, you're sanctified once and for all by the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. You don't have to cry or beg or hold on or let go or, or agonize or pray through and all these expressions that we hear, you know. No. When you get saved, you're sanctified by the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. You don't have to be sanctified any more than that. Positionally, practically, yes. We can be more like Jesus, and I want to be more like Jesus. So there is practical sanctification. But positional sanctification, it happens when you get saved. Hope everybody's saved. There's something else too. First Peter chapter three. First Peter chapter three. And this is important. First Peter chapter three and verse eighteen. First Peter three eighteen. For Christ also once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. That is called substitution. He took my place. He died for me. Did he die for you? That's good, isn't it? He died for you and he died for me, but you must make it your own. The vicarious, substitutionary work of our Lord Jesus. You'll just visualize the S over here. Substitution. How precious that is. Yeah, it's wonderful. The substitutionary work of Christ taking our place there upon the cross. He didn't deserve to die. You and I did. We were wicked sinners of the Gentiles. Think of that. We had no claim upon God. No, no. But Christ took our place. He is our substitute, the substitutionary, vicarious work of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, there upon the cross of Calvary. But something else took place, which is the most important of everything. And this is called God has been propitiated. Propitiation is what we get us word mercy seat. God has been mercy seated. God is satisfied. If God is not satisfied, all the rest is nonsense. But he is satisfied. God has been propitiated. How precious that is. The Lord Jesus satisfied God the Father's heart. He can satisfy your heart too. <coughs> Jesus can satisfy, satisfy, satisfy. Jesus can satisfy 
Yes, yes, yes. He wants to satisfy your heart if you trust him as your own personal savior because God has been propitiated through that great redemptive work upon the cross of Calvary. The Lord Jesus was on the cross from nine o'clock in the morning until three o'clock in the afternoon. The first three hours could not save a soul. He died for righteousness sake. But the last three hours, God shut him in. There was darkness upon the whole face of the earth. And he cries out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He was abandoned there upon that cross for three hours. Three hours of darkness, bearing the sin of the world, not just only our sins, but the whole sin of, he tasted death for everything, not just every man. Think of that. The Lord Jesus did. What a death he died. From nine o'clock in the morning until three o'clock in the afternoon. He suffered for righteousness sake the first three hours. The last three hours he suffered for your sins and my sins there upon the cross of Calvary. God has been propitiated. And something as a result of all of that, if you get saved, you'll have peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. How precious that is. That's the only way you can get peace. It's through our Lord Jesus Christ. But also something else happens. You're pardoned. He will abundantly pardon. He will abundantly pardon you. People in jail know what that means to be pardoned. Abundantly pardoned. Isaiah 55, verse, verse, verse 6 and 7 at your leisure. But more than all of that, when you trust Christ as your Savior, you have certain things. You have what? Starts with an E. Eternal life. You have eternal life. Now this eternal life is in Christ, not in you and me, but we have it in him as a present possession. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. John 3.16, John 3.36, John 5.24, and many, many other ones, Romans 6.21-23, have an eternal life to trust in Christ as our own personal Savior. Brother Dodger used to go to a, 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 a park and there were boys and girls playing. He said to one little boy, he said, do you know John 3.16? No, sir, I don't think he lives around me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but you can have eternal life by trusting the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. Life without end. What would you do if you had to leave this life today? Would you be with Christ, which is far better? Or would you go down to the pit? We have eternal life by trusting Jesus as our Savior. How wonderful that is. Life without end. This life is just a short time. I'm 86, soon be 87. For all eternity you have eternal life to be with Christ. And reign over the earth for a thousand years. See, we're not just going to sit around and sing or Roll our thumbs. No, no, we're going to be with the Lord Jesus reigning over the earth. And what you do for the Lord Jesus determines your place in the world to come. Not, not being, not heaven. The blood of Christ takes you to heaven. That's equal. But what we do for the Lord Jesus determines our position in the world to come. Not this world, but the world to come. That happens. If the Lord would come today, it happens seven years. The world to come will be set up while he'll reign over the earth for a thousand years. And we'll live and reign with him. Maybe you'll reign over the past or Washington, D.C. or something. Yeah. How wonderful. How wonderful that is. <coughs> the last two things John chapter 8, verse 30 and 31, and verse 36. Maybe someone read that for us. John 8, verse 31 and 32 and verse 36.
Anybody have it? You can read it. You have it? Good. Read it. Okay, Andrew, read it for Okay, son. Verse 32. First, well, 31 and 32 and verse 36. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Thank you. <coughs> These people did not get saved. They said they believed. They said, we have Abraham of our father. The Lord Jesus, yes, your father's a devil because you seek to kill me, those Jews. But when we get saved, we have something called Christian liberty. We're set free. If the Son shall set you free, you'll be free indeed. Christian liberty. Like we meet, we don't have to have a preacher or a pastor or a choir director. There's nothing in the Bible about that. We have Christian liberty just to meet to the Lord's name alone. Any brother in good standing can get up here and give thanks for those emblems. Any brother can give out a hymn or, or read the Bible or, or pray or praise. Yeah, because we have that Christian liberty. I didn't know I was going to break bread this morning. No. I didn't, didn't plan that before I left my bedroom. So how wonderful to be set free. If the sun shall set you free, you'll be free indeed. And all of this is based on John, uh, Romans 5, verse 5 and 9. Romans 5. Do you have it, Andrew? Nope. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you, Emily. Those are the fathers and of whom, uh, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who, who is overall, does it Thank you. All of this that we have here is based on one word. And that's the love of God. The love of our Savior. God loves us. He loves you. Did Christ die for you? Can you say the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me? If you can, you're saved. If you really mean it from, the, from your heart, you'll be saved. Because he does love you. God does love us. And we respond to his love by taking his dear son, the lovely man, Lord, man, Christ Jesus, into our lives. And he saves us, and we go on our way rejoicing. So may God add the blessing to the message today for his, his name's sake. Shall we pray together? Our God, our Father, we give thanks for so great salvation found in our Lord Jesus Christ. And the preaching of the gospel, how precious that is.